Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Nicole Vignola Show. Today I'm going to be talking about my personal workout routine. I put up a story on my Instagram that went viral and I had a whole bunch of you asking me what it is that I do in my workout routine to stay lean, stay fit, stay healthy more importantly. And more importantly actually, for me it's joint health. I have had chronic back issues my entire life until I started working out regularly. So I'm gonna give a breakdown of exactly what I do per week to stay healthy and vibrant so that I can feel my best all of the time. And of course, it's grounded in science. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You'll be helping me grow this channel so that we can go to the stratosphere and beyond and help everybody who needs this. Now, I want to begin this video by saying that yes, whilst I've been very active my entire life, I've always seen exercise or always had seen exercise as a form of punishment. I come from that era of the 90s, early 2000s, those are the years that I grew up in, where exercise was kind of something that you did to outdo the food that you ate. And so my relationship with exercise was never truly that great. I would exercise to punish myself. I would do exercise so that I could stay skinny. I would do exercise so that I had the freedom to eat what I wanted but it was always kind of accompanied by this negative feeling of I have to do this and it's only recently in the last I would say five years that I started to really change my relationship to food which I have a video on that by the way and exercise more importantly exercise and when I started studying the neuroscience of what is going on in our brain and our relationship and our mindset towards exercise my whole world changed and so I'm going to give it to you guys in this video today because I don't want you to see exercise as something that you have to do to punish yourself for the food that you ate the night before. Exercise is freedom. Exercise is a form of respecting our body. It's a form of nourishing ourselves so that we can feel better, so that we can perform better, so that we can actually age better and give ourselves the best chance to live. I also want to say that I've always struggled with my weight. In across my 20s, I have yo-yoed around 14 kilos, and that is quite a lot. And I feel like now, in the last few years, I finally hit the nail on the head with changing my relationship to my body through exercise, through nutrition, through mindfulness practices, through meditation, through visualization, and just rewiring my brain to see exercise as something that is actually something I truly, truly enjoy. So I've broken down my workout regime into three different sections. Section one is resistance training, which is the bulk of my workout. Section two is activities, hobbies, and cardio. And then section three is that additional neat training. So things like dog walking, gardening, etc. Okay, so I'll start with section one, which is resistance training. Resistance training is probably the most important thing that we should all be doing in life, especially as women. Our bone density reaches its peaks at around age 30 to 35, and then as we start to move into our 40s, bone density can decrease. Now, it can decrease if we don't put our bones under pressure. When we put our bones under pressure regularly, obviously controlled pressure, we actually induce something called osteoblasts, which help to regenerate the bone density, the bone mass. And if we don't do that regularly, they start to deteriorate. That has got to do with estrogen dropping. So as our body shifts from using estrogen from the ovaries and starts shifting into using estrogen from the fat cells, which is what happens when we go through perimenopause and menopause, the bone density begins to drop because estrogen also regulates those osteoblasts. It regulates bone density. And as that drops, bone density begins to drop unless we maintain physical exercise, predominantly resistance training. Now here's the other thing that happens during resistance training. When you contract and relax your muscles under tension, you release these muscle-derived proteins called myokines. Myokines basically have a direct line of communication with your brain. So you'll have all heard of the gut-brain axis. We also have something called the muscle-brain axis. So these myokines communicate with the brain to make you feel a particular way. And these myokines make you feel really good. Now I'll give you some examples. You have something called irisin, which binds to the limbic system to help down-regulate emotional thinking. Have you ever had that feeling where you go to the gym and you think you look kind of ugly and then after you've exercised you're like, 
actually I think I'm not that ugly after all. That is because irisin is basically quietening down that limbic system, that emotional part of the brain, and it's changing your perception of yourself. So when you've gone to the gym, yes, you feel good because you've just exercised, but that is also another reason why actually pretty cool when you think about it. Another myokine is insulin growth like factor one, IGF-1. Now IGF-1 has been strongly linked to cognitive decline in the sense that there's an inverse relationship, meaning that higher levels of IGF-1 in the brain means that there is higher levels of integrity in the brain and lower levels of IGF-1s have been correlated to more cognitive decline. So IGF-1 has been shown to regulate plasticity in the brain and stave off neurodegenerative diseases. Now, last but not least, something that is really important that I want you to understand is that as we age, we start to develop something called anabolic resistance, meaning that our muscles, which are supposed to synthesize proteins and help regulate our appetite, what it means is that when we have this anabolic resistance, our body is not absorbing the nutrients from our food effectively and then turning them into healthy muscle cells. We have to continuously put our muscles under pressure so that they can continue to regenerate and quote unquote, remove the stagnated cells that are no longer efficient at absorbing these nutrients and synthesizing proteins into effective mechanisms for us to use as energy. Now there's one more thing that happens actually during resistance training is that it helps to regulate our appetite. So for a long time I was always a slave to my emotional eating, my appetite control, and only when I started to build lean muscle mass, which helps to burn more calories and also helps to regulate your appetite, that I start to stay lean, feel better, feel fuller for longer and feel good about myself. Now, when I overeat, I overeat because I think my body needs it. I don't overeat because I'm emotionally binging. I think, okay, you were emotional yesterday, you needed this food for whatever reason, enjoy it, move on, let's go. Let's keep going with the consistency. The consistency part of exercise is the most underrated tool. Now, what do I do in my resistance training blocks? I resistance train three times per week. I split it into three blocks. I lift three times a week. I do a blend of the work that my coach Connor has given me. I'll tag him below so that you guys can access him if you want to. He is the one person that has changed my life when it comes to my joint health. I was hypermobile in my joints and I didn't have enough strength in those joints. And so I'm doing a lot of repatterning movements because my back was taking a lot of the pressure from other places that didn't have enough tension. So I spend around 20 minutes doing his work and then I move into a lifting block. So I do three lifting blocks per week. I deadlift on one day, I do hip thrusts on another day and I do front squats on the last day. All of those three days are accompanied by upper body movements as well. So for example, with my deadlift, I will do pull-ups. With my hip thrusts, I do overhead press. And then on the last day with my squats, I actually do handstands. And then I do a lot of accessory work in between as well. And I also want you to know that I used to be a personal trainer. And so it is grounded in science. It is grounded in also knowledge on how to coach people. I personally keep my reps high. So I do 10 to 12 reps on the big compound movements. I will do that for about three months. Then I will cycle into some more strength training where I drop the reps quite a lot and I add on the weight quite a lot. So I start testing like my three rep max, which is essentially how many reps you can do for three. Section two is my activities, my hobbies, my cardio. Now, I don't personally do HIT. HIT training is very good. You probably want to take your heart rate up to zone five on a regular basis. Zone five is something like a Tabata workout, something where you are pushing the limits of your cardiovascular output. Zone five, we're only doing that for about four minutes. And so it's not a huge amount of zone five that you need to do per week. You probably only need to do around five to 10 minutes per week of zone five. That is true HIT training. I do tennis once a week and then I run another time per week or I cycle depending on how I feel on the day. But generally speaking, I run and I play tennis. Those are my two cardiovascular days whereby when I'm doing tennis, I'm hitting higher levels of hit. So you might want to do a slight hit session in the week and then a more kind of slower zone three cardio session. That is my cardio routine. Now, if you're doing majority cardio, I would say that you probably need to add more resistance in. A lot of people do too much cardio and not enough resistance. Now, the data shows that you want to be doing about 150 minutes of blended, moderate, vigorous exercise per week. 
of cardio. Now that can also fall into your resistance training because sometimes resistance training means that you are bringing your heart rate up to about a zone three, maybe even a zone four, depending if you're doing a heavy load. And that is why I'm reluctant to get into the nitty gritties of how much time you should be spending. And I would like you to rather focus on effectively creating a system for yourself where you're moving on a regular basis consistently. I think the problem with exercises is sometimes we put too much emphasis on a 60 minute workout when if you instead just did 20 minutes because you don't feel like going to the gym you'd still be doing 20 versus nothing and the problem is that a lot of us put too much pressure on ourselves and so we suck the joy out of doing any of this and then exercise becomes this kind of thing that we avoid that we punish ourselves with because we start to feel shame around the fact that we didn't work out for 60 minutes so i'm very reluctant to tell you how many minutes to be spending doing each but i would say that if you can aim for about an hour to two hours per week of cardio the data shows 150 minutes of a blend but if you're incorporating resistance training then you can probably aim for about two hours of cardio per week additional to your resistance training. If you're somebody that feels like two hours of cardio additional is too much or daunting, then just start slow and add on and just have fun and enjoy it. Now the last thing that I personally do is that NEAT training. NEAT stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So essentially staying active without thinking that you're doing exercise. So what that means is things like walking your dog, things like doing the gardening, things like staying active throughout the house, doing the chores, doing the dishes, doing the laundry, Laundry, those are all going to increase your needs and those are the kind of things that I don't really necessarily track but I aim to do on a regular basis so I walk my dogs every day if not every day because I have a garden then at least every second day but if I'm not walking them then I'm doing other things I'm very active around my house that is going to increase your calorie expenditure meaning that you're now active and you're burning calories without even realizing it so if you're somebody that has a desk job I'm at my desk a lot I'm also around the house a lot. Try and increase your activity around the house or around your life. Walk to work instead of drive, walk to the gym instead of drive, maybe cycle instead of driving everywhere and just try and overall increase that level of activity that you could do without really thinking about it. Like taking the stairs instead of the elevator, small things like that. If you found this helpful, then please like, comment and subscribe leave your questions in the comment box i'd love to answer your questions there and yeah i hope you like this style of video it's a little bit more of an insight into my life and what i do to stay fit and healthy as i said i do this predominantly for my health for my back especially because i can now run i can do everything pain-free which is a huge blessing to me because there is nothing more debilitating than chronic pain